Morning, Saturday the 16th of August 2014 and today is a very special day boys and girls because my sister is even a year, oh, hang on a minute, So I have the echo on then, sorry about that, did you think I was in a large auditorium, did you? You th is that what you thought? You thought I was coming from the Royal Albert Hall then, didn't you, boys and girls? You, you did, didn't you? I can tell. Can you just imagine me sitting on a very large stage somewhere like the Royal Albert Hall doing a chat show? Just me and a chair. Would it work? That's the question. You know, and I could have special guests. Now, what special guests Because I have? I can only think of one or two special guests. Of course, Mr Barry Manilow. We have Barry Manilow News later on today, boys and girls. Barry Manilow News. Yes, we would have Shirley Bassey. We would have Elton John. We would have Vera Lynn. We would have Max Bike. Oh, no, we wouldn't. He's dead, isn't he? Um, well, we could we could we could dig up a few people, you know, bring them on. That'd be quite nice. Anyway, auditorium now off. Sorry about that. A little bit of echo there. Uh, we must 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 do something very special today. My sister is so old, old, old. Forty nine years old today. Never end for mention a woman's age, but my sister. <laughs> Except your sister. 49 today. Her name's Sharon. Join in. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sharon. Happy birthday to you. Forty-nine today, so old. My sister is so old. She's only two years younger than me, but that's not the point, is it? You know. Uh, by the way, Wendy, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I scratched my ear, and I immediately thought of Wendy, Wendy Wire, who's with us as always on this Saturday morning, and she mentioned last week that apparently. While I was, I think, while I was on a phone call to someone, someone rang in, and I started eating my skin off the end of my thumb. And you do these things without thinking about it, don't you? You see what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm, trying not to, I'm trying not to do things today like scratch my ear or rub my nose. I'll tell you one thing I don't do, Wendy. Pick my nose. Isn't that disgusting? Oh, people that... Look, and mainly in cars. And I've been in public toilets before. Now, I'm not one to frequent public toilets too often, as you... Pardon? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't like to use public toilets. I'd rather hold on until I get home. I, I don't even like to use people's toilets in their houses, except my best mate, Ron. Yeah, I love using his toilet. Sometimes I don't bother flushing it afterwards just to annoy him, or I might leave the door open. It's like, Ron, why is this up here? And he comes up the stairs and I'm sitting there, you know, with the door open. <laughs> and then he makes a point of going around with the air freshener stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm so naughty. How did we get onto that? Toilets. Wendy? Nose picking. Nose picking, that's it. I've been in public toilets and you look at the walls and people have obviously been picking their nose and put it on the walls. I don't know what it's like in the lady. Well, the ladies' toilets are even worse. Oh, God. There's always water. I, I, I don't understand how they miss the bowl. Women's toilets. What's that all about, ladies? Ladies' toilets are really dirty. I think they're disgusting. Disgusting. And they have that special bin. Oh, bleh. Oh no, I can't, I can't even talk. Oh, I can't even can't even talk about that special bin they have in ladies' toilets. I thought it was a cigarette ashtray. Fortunately, I don't smoke, so I didn't have a look. Oh, so I will try purposely today and not bite my fingernails or pick my nose or uh, uh, sometimes the ear though you know, I might have a little scratch of the ear but I'll try and do it maybe I should try and do it off off screen you know sort of I don't know does it oops I've just dropped something hang on 
that's me remote controller i've got a remote pa uh, uh, an electric socket remote controller here and when i finish doing the show and everything's recorded or whatever i've been doing in here then i hit all these off buttons and that completely cuts the power to the um, computers or anything that might be plugged into the sockets you know because we're always on always ways of saving electricity boys and girls always always ways of saving electricity absolutely now some messages already now funnily enough daniel's here good morning daniel and i was just about to say what's happened to daniel is he dead you know because we haven't heard from him for a couple of weeks ago and he's only down the road daniel in camberley camberley in surrey which is kind of the poor part of bracknell you know people that can't afford to live in bracknell do end up in camberley next to the big Tesco's, you know, there's no Tesco's near me. I don't think so. There is absolutely no Tesco's near me. But that's where Daniel lives. And he says, good morning, Chris. My mate's job is to empty those bins. And my mate's job is to empty those bins and the ladies' toilets with his bare hands. Oh, no. Blech. Blech. <laughs> I mean, you could have Ebola virus in one of those bins. Ebola virus, which, uh, oh, that, that, that links quite nicely to one of the emails. A very, very short email from Carl Waring. Good morning, Carl. Who's still moaning about the opening video. Carl, first of all, your opening video, please, please get it sorted to the correct aspect ratio. It's supposed to be widescreen the same as your programme. Yes, agreed, Carl. Not easier said than done, dear. You know what I'm like with this technology stuff? Easier said than done. I'm trying to work it out. I can't work it out. I really can't work it out. He says, also, next, the Ebola virus, you cannot catch it through shaking hands. But so, so if you knew someone with Ebola, would you shake their hands, Carl? I bet you wouldn't, would you? I bet you wouldn't shake their hands. He says, uh, you mentioned around nine minutes into last week, last Saturday show, it's mainly contracted via bodily fluids. Yeah, but they might have um, wiped a bit of bodily fluids on their hands, mightn't they? You know, maybe they've gone like that with their face, or, you know, had a little bit of a scratch somewhere else down below, and then they're shaking your hand. Yes, bodily fluids, which would mean which would mean um, that you could possibly catch it from one of those bins in the ladies' toilets. Bodily fluid. <laughs> we must move on from this subject. It's making me feel quite real. Oh, Daniel's been on holiday. I do beg your pardon, Daniel. I forgot all about that. I did tell you, but you didn't listen. I'm sorry. I can't keep up with everything, dear. I try so hard to keep up with everything, but it's very difficult. Now, where did you go on holiday again? Do remind me. Because I did, I'll tell you, my nephew and his wife and uh, their two wonderful, wonderful children, Evie and Harry, have recently been on a holiday to Whitby in a caravan. Uh, now, I've never been on holiday in a caravan. I, I, was, I, was, I was having a little bit of a joke with you last week. But you know what? I think I'd like to go on holiday in a caravan. I do. I don't know where. Wouldn't it be very hot, though? If, if it was the summer, it would be very hot and very cold in the winter. I just assume. If it's the same as a car. You know, because you're, when you're driving along in the car, you've got your heater on, you get a bit too hot, you turn it off. Well, within 30 seconds again, you're cold again, aren't you? So you turn it on, you turn it off, you turn it... Unless, of course, you're one of those posh people that have got climate control. Oh, yes. Climate control. In Ron's car, there's... He's got a, an Audi... I don't know what it is. An Audi. This is a much better car than mine. Yeah, because he has to be... You know, he, he likes his cars. Whereas me, car gets me from A to B. Toyota Yaris at the moment. Might get another Toyota Yaris next year. I have a diesel car at the moment. And now the government are telling us that diesel is worse for the environment than petrol. So after years... Because in this country, they've been telling us to buy diesels for years. They're more economical and they're better for the environment and all this old stuff. So we did. We did buy all diesels. Now they're telling us they're worse. And they want to charge us something like £10. Um, uh, £10. Is it? Is it? They're talking about £10 or £12 uh, per day if you want to go into London in a diesel car. Now, 
already in London doing the daytime. I think it's between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. or 7 a.m., somewhere around that. Already they have the congestion charge, which I think that's, that's, I think that's just gone up to 11 or 12 pounds, okay? Right? So if you've got a diesel car and you want to go into, now just take someone with a full time job who drives to work. If they want to drive to work in a diesel car, so say that's going to cost them, let, 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 let's just call it £10. Uh, £10 for the congestion charge, £10 for the fact that you've got a diesel car. If they go ahead with this, it's going to cost £20 per day to come in and out of London. Now... It's not hard to do the sums. £20 a day is £100 a week. So someone with a full-time job in London who wants to drive into work, it's going to cost them £400 a month just to drive to work. If you ask me, it's just another tax. They're looking at ways to raise money, always. Never got enough bloody money, have they, for their fat assed salaries government members and council officials, you know, so they want to put another tax on, on diesel cars. Now, now I've got a diesel car, but actually it, it's not going to worry me too much because um, round about just before this time next year, I'll be due for um, changing my car. I buy it on a, well, I put a deposit down and then I pay so much a month. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that's not. It's not buy to let. What is it? Um, It's not HP. Um, I, I, I can't remember what that's called, but that's how I buy my car or, or, or how I have my car. I don't actually own it. OK, um, so this time next year, just before now, it'll be time to change it. So if this goes ahead, I will be looking at getting perhaps something different. Now, I would love an electric car, but I've said time and time again, they are just not up yet on the range of driving electric car. You can get up to, I mean, generally, it seems to be up to about 100 miles before you need a charge. Also, my car is not parked outside my house. I have a garage in a block of garages and there's no electricity in there. So presumably I'd have to get onto the electricity people. And I, I don't know how that works. Work, they would put a, uh, an electric socket in the garage or something like that. And I would plug into that at night. I suppose that's how it works. Something like that, maybe. But even then, the range is generally about 100 miles. Now, I saw a little article about this in, funnily enough, today's Daily Mail, just as I was about to talk about it. But just before I go on to that, yeah, 20, so, so, 20, so £400 a month just to drive to work. It's a bit much, isn't it? And you're probably saying to yourself, well, they'll have to take a train. Trains are horrendously expensive in this country now. Horrendously expensive, especially if you want to travel at the time that everyone else wants to go to work. Uh, I think between seven and ten and four and seven at the other end. I think that's the peak times, even at other times. If I want to go to... Um, if I want to go to my hospital that I go to in London, the Royal Free, where I go every few months, um, then it costs me £16 each way. That's off peak. Sorry, not each way, return. £16. That's a hell of a lot of money just to go on a journey. So I do wonder if they've done this, charging, they want to charge diesel cars to make driving more comparable, perhaps. With the trains, so they, oh well, if it's going to cost me four hundred pound a month, I might as well take the train. I wonder if that's what they've done. It's a shocking amount of money, four hundred pound a month just to drive to work. Now I drive around at night time, so I'm the congestion charge doesn't apply at the times I go in and out of London. So really, at the moment, I have a free. <laughs> I, I say, you know getting all excited that it's a free journey at night. But shouldn't it just be like that? Well, it is a free journey unless you get parking tickets. By the way, uh, the parking ticket saga goes on, right? So last week, I got another one. 
exactly the same place. And do you know why I got that other one, right? I got this one because I had parked in that same bay, but I hadn't got the first letter yet. Do you see what I'm saying? So the first parking ticket was... I don't know if you, you've been following the shows, Daniel. You'll have to go back a few to understand all this. I, I don't want to go through it again because everyone's heard this. The first one I got was for the Red Root thing was the 7th of, of, of August. Basically, Daniel, what happened? I've been parking in the same place for years and years and they changed the bay but didn't tell anyone other than the small little sign that goes up. So that was for the 7th of August. Told you about it last week. I've paid it. That was that. So this time, no, that was, sorry, that was for the 31st of July. Okay. This one I've got for the 7th of August, which of course arrived after I'd realised that you couldn't park. So I've had to pay this one as well. It's not bad, is it? 130 bloody quid. in in less than a week on fixed penalty notices parking in a what is now a taxi rank but it wasn't before you know the bay looks exactly the same red little thing around it yeah it looks no, nothing new written on the road just the little sign they've changed at the last minute shocking absolutely shocking uh so that was that so there's there's the parking ticket but it is an awful lot of money isn't it so come the end, I probably will be looking um, if if they bring the diesel thing in and it's night time as well. Right. Because I can understand the congestion charge being only at certain times, i.e. when it's busy. Now, with the diesel charge coming in and out of London, I have a feeling that's going to be 24 hours, in which case I'll be eligible for that one. And that will cost me. If I have the same, keep the same car at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's going to cost me £50 a week. £200 a month if they bring in this diesel car charge and it's 24 hours. £200 a month. Isn't it wrong? It's really, really wrong. So um, that's the thing there. <coughs> uh, Daniel says, get a milk float as your new car. Oh, they're great milk floats, aren't they? I love those. A bit slow. Ha! <laughs> I'd have to leave at like four in the afternoon to start work at ten. He says, a garage in a block. Now, that sounds very Bracknell. Yes. <laughs> There's no room for garages here. We've got massive gardens. Massive gardens. Uh, and Daniel's been on holiday to the Norfolk Broads. Have you been on one of those boats? That's nice, being on a boat. Uh, Marge says, good morning, I'm six minutes late. Oh, never mind, Marge. Not sure what's up, but my video and audio are out of sync at my end. I rebooted it and it, it works on other videos, but your video is slow and not keeping up with the audio. Hope no one else is seeing this. I've tried different speeds too. Anyone else got trouble with the video today? <coughs> huh? Wendy says you sounded like you were in a cave at the beginning of the show today. Yes, I am Captain. I am Captain Caveman. <laughs> she didn't like the story about the toilets. Don't get a word with the lose. I like your purple vase. Do you like this? Well, it's blue. It's more. It's more blue. Got a purple vase. My item of interest sitting behind me, and also an elephant. Ronnie bought this off a holiday once. He, he used to bring me little things like this, which I think is quite nice to have something like that. You know, something on the shelf. I've got a few little bits and pieces he bought back over the years, um, which is quite nice. Um, Marge likes the elephant as well. She collects them. Oh, do you? Yeah, they're nice, aren't they, Marge? Terry H... <coughs> says good morning Chris we're here again my stream is very jumpy today oh is anyone else having problems with the old stream today then I don't think it's just you then Marge Daniel's got trouble with the stream as well oh I'm sorry about that don't know why I do know there's been trouble with the internet should we tr actually shall I turn off the high, high definition and see what happens 
okay? Right, those of you watching us live, see if that's any better. I've um, turned down the, um, the quality of the video. Those of you watching the recording, we are still in full colour as always, boys and girls. No jumping or anything. Gary says, yep, you're out of sync there as well, but it does not spoil the show. Thank you, Gary. Oh, well, I, I don't know why that is. I know we've been having trouble with the internet um, all week, actually, since Tuesday. Tuesday, it went down altogether. And that wasn't just me. Ronnie's one went down as well. He was on his phone. He rang up EE straight away. They said they were having problems. And I, I came back. I had no internet on at home, no internet on the phone. So, yes, it's... Um, don't, don't quite know why that was. Anyway, I've, for those of you watching a live show, I've turned down the quality. See how that is now. And please report back. I can turn it down another three. I've only turned it down once at the moment. So do you want me to turn it down one more? Because we can't have jumpy videos, can we? Because you won't stay. I know you won't stay. Eh? Yes. Uh, in As I was saying, in Ronnie's car, um... There, he's got heating, two heating controls, one for each side. A little thing that comes out like that. But yes, going back to the, to the whole caravan thing, I, I just imagine it to be a bit cold. Or do you need to heat it, leave the heating on all night long? How does that happen? Is that a battery operated thing? Or do you have, I suppose you have colour gas things, do you? In those um, caravans. Who's been in a caravan, anyone? Eh? Daniel's been in a boat. Norfolk Broads going up and down with family. That'd be fab. I've done that years and years ago. And this boat, it had a button where you could lower the roof and you were supposed to lower the roof um, every time, wh whenever you came to a bridge. Of course, I love this boat. Up and down. And then it wouldn't work. Ha! And there was a bridge coming up. We had to pull over. What we had to do was, was pull over and we didn't have any mobile phones and we didn't really know what to do. So we pulled over for the night and in the morning it started working again. So I don't know why that is. <laughs> very, very strange. Now let me see if we've sorted out this video. Barry Manolo looks in pain in this month's photo. No, he doesn't look in pain at all. He's singing. Can you sing? No, didn't think so. You can't sing either, can you? Now, uh, the electric car business. Yes, in today's Daily Mail, it says seven of the best electric cars, the new breed of plug-ins and hybrids that will go the extra mile. This is something I'm going to have to think about next year um, when it comes to changing the car, if they bring in this this, this diesel charge, this, this car charge for for um, diesel cars. It says, electric cars have come a long way, this is in today's Daily Mail, uh, from the jokes about glorified milk floats. I love the milk floats, didn't you? All bit cold in the winter. I did used to feel sorry for the milkman going around in his little milk float because they'd have got no doors or anything, have they? They're open. He must have been blooming freezing. We were a lot harder then in the 70s, weren't we, girls and boys? We were a lot harder then with no central heating or anything like that. Mind you, I still don't turn mine on here. As you well know, we can't afford to turn central eating on. Is that video any better? Someone tell me, please. Or is it still the same? Um, pure electric vehicles, such as the Nissan Leaf, rely solely on electric motor and a charged battery, while petrol or diesel electric hybrids, such as the Toyota Prius. Oh, don't you hate Toyota Prius drivers? I'm sorry. I've now put them in the same category as black taxis, slow buses and Addison and Addison Lee minicabs. In the same bracket as those now are Toyota Prius drivers. They drive so bloody slow. And you know why? Because I think it's after 30 mile an hour or something like that, the uh, petrol motor kicks in. That's why they're driving so blooming slow all the time. Pains in the arse. Toyota Prius drivers. Uh... Uh, well, these cars uh, generate electric charge from the engine or braking as a supplement. Now, I've heard this about the braking when you brake on an electric car. It's supposed to recharge the battery somehow. Um, 
Apparently that video is still lagging, is it? Mm. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Uh, I'll take it down another two, all right? Right, you're going to lose the quality a bit there. See how that goes now if you're watching live. Recorded viewers, still perfect. It goes on to say, now there are also plug-in hybrids which can be charged at home from the mains or a public charging point. Now, this, this is the thing, you see, I've got no electric in the garage, but I suppose I could have that put in. I don't know. Oh, I bet they charge an arm and a leg for that. Would it be a few hundred quid, do you think? Do you have an electric point put in the um, garage? Do you know that, Daniel? It's a, da it's a garage and a block. How much would that cost me? The story goes on. These run on electric power only, but have a conventional engine or range extender that kicks in when the battery runs down. Now, I know one of the BMWs has this. That does have a range extender thing. <clears throat> it says... Um, Despite the range of pollution-free two pence a mile motoring, and that's cheap, it is cheap to run electric car. Many motorists are put off electric cars because of range anxiety. Uh, but to deal with this, there are plans to increase the number of roadside charging points currently near about 6,000 in Britain, of which 1,400 are in London. Now, and then it gives the list of what are the best electric cars. Um... Sorry, Marge says, it's not your HD. Now you're out of sync and fuzzy. OK, put it back on then. <laughs> right, going back up to full power. There we are. Back in high definition. But we might be lagging a bit. Sorry, there's not a lot I can do about that, but just carry on. Carry on like mummy's brave little soldier. I am. So here are those cars, but listen to the prices. At the top of the range, we have the Tesla, Tesla, sorry, the Tesla Model S. What a lovely looking car. What a really, it's the groundbreaking Tesla Model S electric car. Cost between £49,000 and £68,000. We haven't got that sort of money to spend on a car, dear. Christ. You're never going to save that much in electric in petrol, are you? It claims a range of 312 miles on a full charge. Well, see, if that's got that, then why can't, why can't normal cars like Toyota and Honda do something like that? I don't get that. They've worked it out. And, you know, with the Tesla, I can tell you're paying for the, for the design of the car. It looks like a beautiful sports car, like one of those expensive BMWs. It's the same sort of thing like Ron had a couple of years ago. Bloody most uncomfortable car I've ever seen in my life. Is it a coupe? It had a fold-down roof, you know, push a button and the roof comes down, all that business. Oh, it was so uncomfortable. Looks really good. Looks aren't everything, are they? So uncomfortable, that BMW. And yet, a BMW 3 Series, you're sitting there, oh, so comfortable, you can go sleep in it. Because I'm hoping to get, when they come out, although not straight away, because they'd be really expensive when they first come out, one of those automatic cars where you just push a button, a couple of buttons, and it takes you, and you got, haven't got to steer or touch anything. You just automatically drive. Really would like one of those. Not a sports version, because it won't be comfortable. Anyway, so it says uh, it can do 312 miles on a full charge. I, I don't understand why we haven't got this in the um, Toyotas and the Hondas of this world, and the Fords. Strange, isn't it? Uh, there's a Porsche 918 Spider. £700,000 for one of those. <laughs> uh, what does it say there? It's electric only mate. range is 18 miles. Well, that's no bloody good. BMW. The futuristic BMW i8 electric hybrid will also get you noticed. £94,000. No. Pure electric will give you 23 miles. That's not, it's no good. It's no good. The Volkswagen e-Golf has a pure electric version of its award-winning Golf. Uh, that one's £25,000. Um, and they say that can do 118 miles. You see, 
this is the thing. It says 118 miles. Now, I bet you can't do that in the winter with the lights on and the heating on and everything else and the radio going. I bet you wouldn't do 118 miles in there then. Probably more like 70, which is no good to me. They've got uh, a Mitsubishi Outlander. Is it a Fev? Um, combined fuel consumption, 148 miles a gallon. That's good. £28,000 to £34,000. Too dear. There's the Zuri. The Renault Zuri. Now, I'm not a fan of Renaults. I've known people to tell me who've worked on Renault cars before. And they're not easy to work on. That one's £13,000, a little bit more affordable. That has a range of 130 miles, it says. Don't know. And they're including a wall box worth £214 that charges the car from flat to full power in three to four hours. Yeah, but, you know, it's already well saying there's a wall box. Now, presumably, you would already have to have... Um, electricity in the garage in the first place to attach the wall box to it there is no electric there's no wire in the in the garage so they'd have to come and do that wouldn't they and finally of course the toyota prius still very popular pain in the ass toyas uh, prius drivers uh, it says as the first petro electric hybrid car toyota changed the rules now there's a plug-in version that can be charged up and then driven 14 miles i mean on electric only 14 miles is that all says it's priced from £28,000, um, 134.5 miles combined fuel economy. You see, but for, it only does 14 miles on electric only. That's, I mean, that's nothing, is it? Really? You've got to get them to do more than that. You really have. But I think I might be having to look at a, a, um, a hybrid card car next year. The trouble is a lot of my, uh, I do motorway driving all the time, you know, and it's, it, that's why I've got the diesel. They told me that's one to buy. Um, Marge says, maybe, well, we've gone back up to high definition. I can't do anything else with the video today. I don't know why it's not working properly. Sorry about that. The video is about the same quality as a, as a 70s. <laughs> I can't read that out, Daniel. You naughty man. You naughty, naughty man. Um, will you get a wig like Barry? Barry hasn't got a wig. That's his hair. That is Barry's hair. I don't know what I don't know what all this dissing is of our Barry. You do annoy me sometimes, people. Stop dissing Barry. Oh, that was clever. Now we've lost it all together. Oh dear, dear, dear. This is just not working today at all. It's just not happening. It's gone all together. Oh, dear, dear me. Well, we're going to have to carry on. We're going to have to carry on. So we've, we've lost our live programme today. Never mind. A live programme has disappeared into the ether. <laughs> Nothing's working. Nothing's working. Never mind. We carry on. We carry on. Now, we've got uh, some emails today, boys. Oh, yes. So you're talking about Barry Manilow there. Here's the Barry Manilow news. Copacabana, which was written by Barry, is touring the UK in a brand new production starring John Lee as Tony Starr and Richard Grieve as Sam Silver. Now, I'm just going to... Just got to try and do something here. One second, my darlings. Let's try and get this back up again for the... For the live people. One second. We've got to do that. We've got to do that. Otherwise, it'll all be moaning. Oh, it's all going terribly, terribly wrong today. Come on. Give me a second or two and we'll see if we can get back up on here. 28%, 29%. Oh, it's all this waiting. I have a terrible trouble with the internet this week. I don't know what's gone wrong. They were saying, I think, run out of space or something in the world. 
for internet stuff. I'm not quite sure. Have they run out of space or web addresses or something like that? I don't know. Don't know. Let's let's uh, go on to this uh, little little story about Copacabana at the Copa Copacabana. Da, 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 da. Right. Barry Manilow's Copacabana, touring the UK in a brand new production, starring John Lee as Tony Starr and Richard Grieve as Sam Silver. Barry Manilow's hit musical will return to the UK and tour in a new production starting in October, which is when I go on holiday to Israel. Yes, Israel, here we come. The musical written by Manilo and his long-term collaborators Bruce Sussman and Jack Feldman, has not been seen in the UK for 10 years and will be opening at Harlow Playhouse on Thursday the 2nd of October 2014. Packed with original songs, dazzling costumes and dynamic choreography, this new production will reimagine the original stage version of Copacabana, which was performed in the US in 1991 and has never before been seen in the UK. So really looking forward to that. I shall definitely be going by that. I wonder if my lovely lady Barry Manilo friends, we could all meet up, couldn't we? And make a bit of a night of that. I could stay at a hotel overnight. They could make a, like a, a little weekend out of it or something like that, perhaps. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know, don't know. Featuring Manilo hits, including Dancing Fool, Who Needs to Dream, Welcome to Havana, and of course the Grammy Award winning Copa, Copa Cabana. Da 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 da. At the Copa, Copa Cabana. Music and passion were always the fashion at the Copa. We fell in love. Yes. <clears throat> uh, this production will have audience members dancing in the aisles. Well, of course it will. They're Barry Manilow songs, aren't they? They are Barry Manilow songs. Of course, we will be dancing in the aisles. A bit like going to see Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, here I go again. Right, let me just do something before I carry on reading this. Oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. Right, we'll try again. Oh, dear, dear me. <laughs> Not having much success today at all, really. Right. Gosh. Oh dear. Right. Sorry, gang. I'm with you shortly. Let's try this. Where's lovely Wendy? Right. Oh, you didn't you didn't hear any of that, did you, Wendy? God. Are you there yet? Right. Okay. Let's see if that's worked now. Right, so we were talking about uh, Barry, yes. Um the story of Copacabana has captivated millions of spectators around the globe. Globe. Globe? Gloves? Glove. <laughs> uh, this tale of romance and stardom features aspiring songwriter Tony working as a pianist in a bar when he met the gorgeous Lola. Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. You see, it's all in the words, dear. All in the words. Right, one minute. I've got to send something here. There we are. Um, <clears throat> quickly, uh, so a songwriter Tony working in a pianist in a bar when he reached the gorgeous Lola, who is determined to make it quickly sh uh, in showbiz, quickly falling for Lola. Tony does everything he can to assist her attempts to find stardom. 
I wish I had some someone assisting me in my attempts to find bloody stardom. Never going to happen, is it? Anyway, those of you that have disappeared for a while, welcome back. Yes, if you missed any of that, then you'll have to watch the recording later because that, that's done on a separate system. There's a separate camera for that, OK? And it'll all be one long show without any fuzziness or lagging. By the way, is it still lagging now? Is it still lagging or did that... Did that Because I didn't turn that off, you know. It just suddenly went. Must be a technical problem. Technical issues. We hate them. Carrying on. So if you want to know the rest about what I've been saying about Cobra Gabbana, you'll have to watch the show when it goes up later. Now, when I finish, just to let you know, uh, the show isn't available as a recording till about 8 or 9 o'clock at night, usually. Uh, sometime, well, I say that, sometime between 6 and 8. That's how long it takes to go up. Ages, isn't it? I know, that's just how it is, OK? And you will be able to find the whole show later at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. My brand new website, which I keep fully up to date. Back to the story. At Manhattan's Copacabana Lounge, both start to find fame. That's Tony and uh, Lola. Before fate steps in and Lola is swept away to Havana to work in a splashy night. I wish someone would sweep me away. Tall, dark and handsome. You know, uh, one of those, one of those, um, what are they called? Premier League footballers. That would do me. One of those. Not one with a load of beard. What is it with all these beards everywhere at the moment? Shave them off, chaps. It's horrible. Don't like... You look old and you look dirty. Beards look old and dirty. Well, a few people they look nice on. But generally, beards look old. Get rid of those beards, boys. Come on. Lola's new mentor and boss, Rico, may demand a price for putting her name in lights. What sort of price is that? You do me a favour and I'll do... Uh, uh, no, Lola, Lola, darling. You're not sleeping with people to get where you are, are you? I hope not. Ah. Barry Manilow said today, I'm honoured that Chris Reardon has read this out. Oh, no, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I had a mirage then. I was looking at my writing in front of me and I had a mirage that Barry Manilow had, ad had actually written to me. But he hasn't. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. I do hope that one day he contacts me. Hi, Chris. Hi, I can't do an American. Hi, Chris. I've seen your show. Please come and meet me and we can do a little bit of a, you know, uh, not, an, not an interview, a, a casual chat where we could chat about things. A anything, really. Does he do cooking? You know. Has he got? A, does he like his garden? Has he got pets? That sort of thing. What's his plans for the future? Wouldn't it be good? Oh well, maybe one day. One day, someday. La 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 la. There's a place. Too much music today. I'm honoured that Cobra Gabbana will return to the UK stage and send my wishes for success to John Richard and the entire company. So, Barry Manilow use, carry, uh, uh, not karaoke, karaoke, Barry Manilow turning up at a karaoke night. Oh, how, how fab would that be? You know, I'm just sitting there reading out these various names. OK, Peter next. OK, AD. OK, Barry, 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 you in here? And then the man comes from the back with the dark glasses and legit one of the sparkly jackets and just walks onto the stage and starts singing a song. And it's Barry Manilow. How fantastic would that be? I would love that. You know, if Jim, Jim will fix it was still on the telly, I could have fixed it for that, couldn't I? But he's not. He's dead. Good. Pedo. Nasty man. Um, so the tour schedule for Barry Manilow's Cobra Gabbana He's at Harlow Playhouse starting Thursday, the 2nd of October. Then he's at South Sea Kings Theatre, Buxton Opera House, Jersey Opera House, Bournemouth Pavilion Theatre. That's probably going to be my one. I should make a little next next to that. Newcastle Mill, Blackpool, Blackpool Grand Theatre and Billingham Forum. Th What's Billingham? Where's that? Isn't there a fish market there? There's nothing in London. Um, nothing in London. So I think probably the nearest one for me will be Bournemouth Pavilion Theatre. Wendy, 
Wendy, I'm assuming you're still with us. Yes, she is. Wendy's still with us. Oh, and she says the video is much better. Are you going to see this, Wendy? Copacabana. It's on Monday the 27th of October to Saturday the 1st of November at Bournemouth Pavilion Theatre. Will you, will you be going to see that at all, Wendy? I wonder if you will. If so, then maybe we could go together. How fabulous would that be? That'd be quite nice. I wonder if there's a group of ladies that want to go to any of those. I don't know what one's nearest. That's probably not the nearest one to you, is it? Now, where are you again? You're up near my sister, aren't you? Your one's probably going to be... Billingham, I'm guessing. I might be completely wrong. No, just a thought for you. Just a thought for you. People are saying that the video's a lot better now, so I'm glad to, glad to hear that. Um, Daniel says... Please stop going on about bloody Barry Manilow. Well, there is some more Barry Manilow news, boys and girls, actually. Shut up, Daniel. Shut up. There's some more Barry Manilow news. He is going to bring a new album out of duets. So who's he going to sing with? Dead people. He's going to... He didn't, he didn't quite put it like that. He's going be, gonna to be singing with people who are no longer with us. So, I mean, what could be the title for that album? Barry Manilow and the Dead People. <laughs> the Dead Sing with Barry. <laughs> you know, wonderful, don't let you know what I'm like. It's no disrespect to anyone. But um, I gather Whitney Houston's one of them and a few other... Very renowned, wonderful singers who I love as well. So that would be very interesting to hear how that works. Barry Manilow doing duets with people who are no longer with us. Or Barry Manilow and the Deads. Eh? I'm looking forward to that. So a duet album. I'll tell you what, Daniel. I might even buy you a copy. Barry Manilow. Yeah. So there's the Barry Manilow news today, boys and girls. All right. Now... Ah, oh, yes, Wendy's going to be waiting for the 2015 dates to see if he's going to be on at Manchester. If not, it'd be St. Helens. Oh, she's just outside. Yeah, Leyland you are. I remember where you are. Drive a British car with British Leyland. Super deal. Do you remember that advert? Marge says, I'm sorry, I have to go. We'll watch show later. Have a great week ahead. Bye, Marge. Oh, I haven't read her letter. I've got her letter here. I'm about to, about to read out your letter, Marge. A little bit more patience. Um, Gavin Gavin's with us as well Good morning Gavin Is that right Fenland Radio is now closed down Why is that I heard that um, One of the internet stations Fenland Radio is closed down I don't know why that is uh, Let's see Oh uh, um, Sorry, gang, I'm trying to trying to find your messages here that we'll put there. Is that one there? There we are. OK, that's sorted. Righty-ho, um, here comes some uh, emails this morning. Uh, Terry H sent this in last week, but we, we kind of run out of time on one of the short videos. Because I do, try, I say short videos. I do try and keep them to about four or five minutes. But there were a couple last week that went on for 14 or 15 minutes. So, you know, I mean, do you stay that long for the short videos? I doubt it. They're supposed to be short. But sometimes lots of stuff comes in. And I like to, if you send in a, um, a uh, email, I do like to read it out as quickly as possible. Terry H says, Terry here. Thought I'd send a quick email to comment on the new show you've just mentioned on your show on the 14th of August. Uh, now, this show is it's like, it's a, like a rip-off of Judge Judy. It's called Judge Rinder. <coughs> and it's on ITV every afternoon at 2 o'clock. Now, I've seen a couple of them. Oh, they're just awful. They're really bad. Judge Judy, I love her. I'm not a regular viewer i've seen a few of her shows now and again i don't specifically put the telly on to watch them but i quite like her shows judge rinder it's really bad i mean it's just awful and terry says one word 
I can only describe this programme as terrible. It's such a rip-off of Judge Judy, who I love. He is camp, which I don't have a problem with, but he is just not authoritative enough. He's very quick to issue out sarcastic comments. In fact, I even heard him say today to one of the people on his show, your mum will be so proud. And it, it, that's, that's basically what it... He just sits there with sarcastic comments all the time. It's not funny. Not funny at all. It's yet another part of ITV's trash daily TV lineup, which is terrible. They could do so much better. Get rid of Gino and Mel and Loose Women. Oh, God, I've seen that Loose Women program. It's awful. All the people that work on that used to come into one of the pubs that I work in um, called the Two Brewers in Clapham. Uh, and they, they were OK. You know, they weren't they weren't people that were full of self-importance. And we all know people like that, don't we? For the very, very important people, there was actually my mate, my, my mate Ron had an issue with one of them yesterday. Now, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. If not, then I'll, um, I'll read it out on one, on, on one of the little shows next week. Uh, very, very, very important people. But they're not like that. The, the people that worked on this programme, Loose Women, were not like that at all. But you could see a couple of the drag queens were crawling around them all the time, you know, hoping to get a spot on there or something like that. Some of the drag queens I was working in uh, with, <coughs> that I, I indeed do work with on Thursday nights, but they don't come in anymore anyway. So, uh, But they were nice people. The people that worked on the show were very nice people. I just didn't like the show. Loose Women. Four women sitting there behind the desk, cackling, telling me about their relationships, this, that and the other. Oh, God, it was so boring. So, so boring. Of course, there are probably, probably a few people watching us now thinking, well, what's the difference between that and this? <laughs> I suppose you could be right there. Um, Terry says, put the news on at 12.30 before BBC One and then have... Port yes, because that's another stupid thing. that I don't understand why TV channels... Sometimes have the news on at the same time. Now, we used to have that at... Um, years ago, the BBC main nighttime news used to be at nine o'clock. And then ITV news was at ten o'clock, and it was the ten o'clock news. And it was, it was renowned. It was a very high-quality programme. The, uh, the ITV news from ITN was at 10 o'clock for years and years, years and years. And I'm talking 20, 30 years. It was at that time. And then suddenly some arsehole at ITV decided they would move it to nine or thereabouts with the whole idea that it fitted in around films. Because sometimes ITV, they'd show a film at nine and then there'd be a break for the news at 10 and then it would carry on again. So... That was one of the reasons that they wanted to show the whole film and then fit in the news around that. Well, the ratings plummeted. They went for divorce. The quality of the programme somehow... I don't know why this was related to it, but it was. The quality of the programme suffered. The BBC saw a good movie and moved their 9 o'clock news to 10. Not quite sure why, right? Because I was quite happy with it at 9 o'clock, but they did, so they took the 10 o'clock spot. A while later, I think a couple of years passed, or, or a period of time passed, ITV decided to put the news back at 10 o'clock. So now we have all the main newses at all the same times. How stupid is that? And it's the same with the afternoon news, I think. Um, they're both on at 1 o'clock. Am I right in that? I could be wrong with that. Can't remember, but certainly Terry says they could put uh, ITV could put the news on at twelve thirty before BBC One, and then have Paul O'Grady with a live afternoon entertainment show. Would be my suggestion. Absolutely agree with you, Terry. A live afternoon entertainment show with Paul O'Grady that would work for me, and then maybe follow that with a decent. There's some awful quiz shows about awful quiz shows with people that cannot host quiz shows. That Vernon Kay, he's just, a, you know, he used to be tall and so not, not that weight's got anything to do with this. He's a bit overweight now and he stands there and it's false. The smile is false. It's fake. It's fake. 
Some of the older, and he's too young to be doing a chat show, uh, uh, not a chat show, a, a quiz show. Um, on the other on the other side of the coin, we have the wonderful Open the Box. Oh, God, what's his name? Noel Edmonds. He's fantastic at it. He's really good. Some of the old favourites, of course, no longer with us. Um, Bob, Bob Monkhouse was, was my top of the quiz show host. You remember the Golden Shot? That was a fantastic one, wasn't it? The golden shot. This is your golden day. Love that song. By the way, that's by Rain. If you ever want to look up that, look up um, Golden Day by Rain or This Is Your Golden Day by Rain. That's the old theme music to, to um, ATV's The Golden Shot. <coughs> So Terry H says, anyway, thought I'd send a quick email. Keep up the good work. Chris, we love you. Thank you, um, Terry. And, oh, Daniel says, would you like to take me to the show? What, Copacabana? No, you don't like Barry. You'd probably sit there with a great big packet of sweets, wouldn't you? And make loads of noise, screwing up the little bits of paper and flicking them at people. I could just imagine you doing that. That'd be the sort of thing you do, Daniel, wouldn't it? Flicking sweets at people. <laughs> Uh, finally tonight, from Marge, and I must apologise to Marge. Marge sent me two videos this week of uh, a dog, and she sorted out her high definition on the um, smartphone that she's got, and sent me two videos, which I meant to download and convert to show them to you on here, and I forgot to do it, and now I can't find the email. I wonder if you've still got those videos, Marge. Could you possibly send them again? Or send me... No, they're on YouTube. If you send me the links to YouTube, and I'll be able to pick them off again, please, Marge. Marge says, <coughs> On the subject of Judge Judy, she gets way too rude, in my opinion, to the people. I do know dealing with people can be very hard at times, but I'm more about being civil and doing the facts. I like Judge Alex and Judge Brown. Judge Lynn Toller, with my favourite being Alex Ferrer. Well, I don't know any of those. Is that, Are they programmes just like Judge Judy, Marge? I, I don't know any of those. She says, I do not know if you've seen or heard them, but those would be the ones I would sit and watch throughout the entire show. Those were beautiful flowers you showed us on your show this week. And yes, I look forward to seeing the videos of your next year's garden when you plant them. Well, I've been doing a bit of gardening this week, actually. But I'll tell you about that on the short videos uh, this, uh, coming up this week, OK? My favourite flowers are lilacs or anything purple. Yeah, I like lilacs. I didn't comment on Joy's Doberman, but I must say that I own a Doberman as well. And to me, it's my favourite breed. Um... Talking of Joy's Doberman, is that right? Some of you clubbed together and bought Joy a new jo Joyce. No, it's Joyce. Uh, Joyce a new um, a new dog. Did I see that somewhere this week? If you did, that's ever so nice of you. That's really nice. You know, a replacement pet. Well, it doesn't replace the pet that you had. It can never replace the pet that you had. But it's like. Um. A new, a kind of new, new different beginning, isn't it, really? Hmm? You know, when, when a pet dies, that was its life, that was your life's life with that cat or dog, goldfish, whatever, parrot. And it dies and you leave a little gap usually and you might get another one. That's never going to replace that one, but it's like a new part of your life, isn't it? So if you did do that, ladies... Uh, you've impressed me what a wonderful thing to do I think I could be completely wrong with that but I think some of you clubbed together and bought Joyce a new dog Marge says I had a, a dear Doberman pass about three and a half years ago very still hard to this day of course her name was Ananda she was an amazing dog Athena is the name of my current Doberman, along with my two Boston Terriers, Miss Myrtle May, aged 14, and Dharma, aged 7. They're unusual names you've got for your dogs there. Till next time, commenting hugs to you and your millions of fans. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Thank you, Marge. 
Did I say uh, night, Gavin? Sorry, Gavin. Gavin, what happened to Fenland Radio? I heard that that's gone off. Is that right? Tell me, Gavin, what happened. So thank you for that. And if if at all possible, um, Marge, could you could you send me the links for your wonderful uh, videos again that you took time and effort, and I'll try and get those sorted for next week. Okay. That's it today, boys and girls. Sorry, uh, those of you watching the live show, the issues we had earlier. Don't know what happened today. Various things not working properly. Um, do send in an email. My email address <coughs> is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, and do check out uh, everything that I do. You can find at my new website, United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk united kingdom talk dot co dot uk have a lovely weekend i'll see you for another short video on monday bye bye now